So Greg, tell us from when you planted these what what you've done and then we'll... Well like I said they were kind of short when I started them out so they should be unheaded trees when you plant them I believe. And then I forgot to debud the sides and the bottom initially so I had brakes come sideways and down and everywhere so I lost a lot of upright breaking potential and growth in that first leaf and then this is the results of the second leaf and I didn't put a lot of energy into this as you might be able to tell. So it's kind of where it's at right there now. So, so those are all real good points. It, it, ideally, you, you're going to have a tree that is as long as the spacing from tree to, to the next tree. So you don't have to spend some time filling that gap. <clears throat> but it's right now, it's really hard to get unheaded trees from nurseries. We, when we set up our big trial that's down at Clarksville, we hammered over and over and over. and We got guarantees they're not going to be headed. We'll get special boxes for you. They still came headed. Um, <clears throat> even after three months of direct talks with the nursery. So you've done the right thing. You, you know, you were able to get strong growth out the end and then just bring that on over to fill that gap. And another thing that one could do if you've got this gap here, you could bring this one back, tie it down and, and fill the gap that way. The planting all at one angle is not really the critical issue. The critical issue is to fill that bottom cordon in at the end of the first two years and be developing your uprights at the end of those first two years as well. So it doesn't matter if they go one way and, and back the other way to fill the gap or if they all go one direction. <clears throat> you did, um, then the second year, you had uh, an upright here and you cut that and you had an upright here and cut that and those are all the right things to do going into the second year. If you had done that bud removal as you indicated on the sides and the bottoms, you would have had more uprights growing and, and uh, all that energy would be channeled up. Instead you had to remove stuff that, that was a lost energy. <clears throat> but coming in the second year then and cutting what did grow, instead of leaving it while hoping to try to stimulate these to grow, it was the right thing because if you start it all over again, you've got much more of a chance to get these to grow in tandem. And basically, the only thing I left is this long shoot that was on the end, and I brought that down to try to fill that space. That's that, the only thing I basically left. That was perfect. It, you know? and, and cutting these back to where there was two buds or three buds, here they were cut back to three or four buds, so that that vigor that was here could be diffused into two, and here it was diffused into four. So you bring that back down and you can do the bud removal here to get your uprights where you want them. <clears throat> Probably um, can lose this one and this one and, and just have these trained up in that space and you're filled in quite nicely. You, you can decide either to go this way or cut this one out and, and bring this one up. The next step of course is to put in the next wire so that you can keep these up oriented where you want them. Yesterday at um, Joe Rash's orchard on the ridge we saw where he's doing some trellis cherries and he's using, uh, I guess it's just vinyl, um, polyvinyl irrigation tube, cheap irrigation tube that he slipped over the steel wire. So the between post to post is just one wire, I mean it's the, it's the wire but it's, it's a, got a covering of polyvinyl hose and I think that's a real good idea. I'm thinking just cutting them back hard and just trying to redo them again, you know, and to strengthen them up in the first year, not worry about production in the first, second or year, just try to get a tree growing straight, you know. So that's extremely important. I hope everybody heard that. It's much more important as you move to high density uh, intensive orchards to put more effort in the structure in the first two years. Not try to be greedy and get a little bit of yield that second or third year as much as get the structure exactly right because that's really going to pay off for you in the third, fourth, and fifth year particularly the fourth and fifth year, you have a better yield those years than if you dink around trying to get a little yield in the second year and, and don't complete your structure the way you need it. <clears throat> um, a graduate student of mine is doing a little bit of research on bacterial canker with steel wire, with uh, polypropylene wire, and with a plastic a vinyl covered steel wire like they use in horse farms. And what she's done is simulated the rubbing of the wire uh, by attaching these wires to a drill so she can simulate like a whole season's worth of rubbing with the drill on that and then spraying with a bacterial canker suspension. And she found that she got infection from all three of those wire types but she, it was three times higher with the steel wire than with the two plastic wires. So the plastic wire doesn't eliminate the bacterial canker but it greatly reduces it. And steel wire certainly does, as Greg said, often give uh, uh, rubs that will cause bacterial canker. You want to cut the branches off of that? Yep. So I was, was going to say, so 
what we'll do with um, the UFO at this stage is remove these side branches because we just want the uprights, <clears throat> uh, which will uh, be forming fruiting spurs this year and then next year in the in the fourth year, I guess it is. Um, we should have fruiting spurs all up and down because it's on a Gisela rootstock. So the only other thing we want to do is think about uh, the heavy clustering that you get at the termination of last year's growth. And this is a, something we're going to talk about in whatever system we're looking at. When cherry grows, the, the nodes are spaced relatively far apart during that rapid phase of growth in June and, and early July. And as they slow down, <clears throat> we did get a little bit of slowing here probably as these celeptics came out, but as they slow down, the nodes get closer and closer together. And so when they turn into spurs, two years after they form, you get uh, a more dense formation of spurs right at the terminal. Not only is the, are they more dense, but when you count the number of flowers in every spur, there's more flowers at the terminal spurs than there are the spurs down here. So it gives you much denser fruit towards the terminal of a year's growth two years later when it forms the spurs than down below. So we recommend on precocious rootstocks cutting the top um, 15 to, to 30 percent back to limit that amount of fruiting area and to stimulate um, uh, new rapid growth that's going to have spurs spaced more widely. So with the UFO and with uh, the KGB, which we won't have here, but the KGB is a system that also grows fruit on uprights, but it grows it in a bush form. We come through and we just cut the top 20% or so off. And the way to do that on the UFO system and other systems as well is to stub it back and grow a new branch in its place. And what I have seen, and, and we've got some um, UFO systems in uh, Washington State that are six, seven years old, maybe even as old as eight. And the, the branch renewal has been quite successful. So uh, it's such a narrow canopy that you yeah. do maintain light that far down. Right. This is a two dimensional <clears throat> system. So you don't have a bunch of branches coming out this way that's shading. And so what you need in order to get good branch renewal is light striking this area here. And since it's a two dimensional system, it makes it a lot easier to get new branches coming from that. We have a little bit of problems with the KGB with that. Uh, branch renewal because it's denser, it's a, it's a three-dimensional system, but we've even been successful with the KGB. What you, what you would like is all of your fruiting wood to be renewed within a period of, of five years. So that means that 20% of your, of your uprights need to be stubbed back every year. The easiest way to make that determination with both KGB and UFO is pick the two or three biggest ones. <clears throat> Because once you get into that cycle, you cut the two or three biggest ones out, then the next year there'll be two or three big ones and, and others that are younger that are, are smaller. So you just always take a look. I've got 10, so if I need 20%, that means two have to come out. Pick the two big ones, and the next year pick the next two big ones, etc. Start your renewal process when you begin to fruit. So that otherwise, if you wait until everything's four or five years old, then you've got you've got fruiting wood on here that by the time you get to it, it's seven or eight years old. And so you need to start that renewal process the first year that you begin to fruit. Well, actually, I disagree. Uh, you should be looking at starting it as early as the second year if you've got strong wood. Oh, yeah, definitely. Yeah. Strong wood. Yeah. Definitely. Yeah. So one of, the things that, um, one of the things that our growers do in order to facilitate the pruning of this, so basically this is a, this is a three-step pruning process. One is you come along here and you and you'll stub back either the, the biggest two or three uh, uprights in every on every tree. Then you'll come and you'll remove the laterals up here, and then you'll you'll tip or you'll if it's already to maximum height you'll keep it at that maximum height. And so one of, one of the things that our growers will do is that they'll give uh, one person the job of just going through here and making the stub cuts. That's his only job. So we're trying to simplify things so that he can, you can do it quickly and get through the orchard very quickly. And so his job is to come through. And you see a big, he'll see a, a big uh, uh, cane here, and he'll stub that back. 
he'll stub this back, he'll go on to the next, he'll stub that back, he'll stub that back. Once these get bigger, you might send them through with a, uh, uh, with a, a, a saw. Um, we use uh, pole saws and uh, that works really well. And then, then you've got two guys coming behind him that are removing the laterals and tipping. And that's their only job. So you're taking the thought process out of the pruning so it can become faster. And that's, that's really important, to simplify it as much as possible. And with a, with a system like this, and also with the KGB, you can bring somebody in off the street and within 15 minutes train them how to prune these trees and know that they're going to get it right. You can go and have a cup of coffee, come back in a couple hours, and know that these trees have been pruned properly because it's so simple. And that's what we're trying to do with these new systems. We're trying to simplify the process. With both this UFO, with the KGB system, they're, they're so simple that you can bring in new workers, which we're finding we're getting more and more of, people that did not grow up in the orchard industry. And we've got to have simple uh, systems in order to uh, bring these people into, into the industry. Uh, we're, we're moving away from the complicated um, open base systems that we've that we've had for years and years to something that is uh, is science-based and very simple step-by-step -step process.